and welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com i'm your host mikey today we're going to work on this beautiful wrap it's called the open work wrap it's kind of complicated but it's kind of not and today i'm going to be able to show you the ins and outs of being able to do one of these wraps from start to finish the pattern is free and fabulous and if you go to the more information of this video you'll find a link in order to access it. Now this worksheet that I'll be showing you today that has all of these fabulous stuff will be available only on the crochetcrowd.com under the same name of the open work wrap. I have taken the mystery out of this wrap in order to do some diagram work so I worked really hard with Diva Dan and we created some different options for you in order for you to be able to pick up this pattern so you'll be able to see everything here that I am playing with on camera. So today in order to work you need Karen Simply Soft Yarn only three balls and the model is of course wearing black and today I'm using a really cool green color and you'll need a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook in order to play. Without further ado let's go to the crochet diagram first and let's take some of the mystery out so that you can play along with me today. So let's take a closer look on the construction of doing this particular wrap. You're going to notice it's kind of weird and I have to say just bear with me just keep on playing. So what we have here is that we have actually two pieces and it's divided right down in the middle. So what's going to happen is that we are going to create one side of the wrap and then go to the point and then we're going to come back on the same starting chain create the other side and do the point on the other side. So this photo is showing it partially done. Now this is a kind of really interesting thing because this is open lace work and there's a lot of stuff going on. So if you look up here I did some diagram work in handwriting so that Daniel could actually do the diagram. But what I want to show you is that this centerpiece is so important because what happens on one side kind of happens on the other but in a different timing. So let's take a closer look here at the top and here is the center point. I marked it with a stitch marker and then what you see here is that you have one side that has been completed and then we come back and do the other side just like so. It's quite fabulous and you want to keep the pattern in sync with each other so that you don't see this uh, stitch line very very easily. You will see it slightly but it is so small and so minor that you can keep it uh, just looking quite fabulous. So why would they have designed it like this? Well it's all about the model right? So that it's draping down through the front of her body and straight down but you want the stitches to be in the same direction. So if you just do this whole panel from start to finish it'll be down on one side and it'll be up on the other. It won't be in balance. So by doing it in two sections like this when she's wearing it one side to the other the stitches will all be in balance and then you won't have anybody saying to you oh it looks out of balance. You don't need to worry about it and because of the way that it's done right here in the very beginning is that it's going to be very difficult to see where you start started and are stopped and started. So let's take a closer look at the diagram. Let's uh, really wow you with that next. So here's what the diagrams look like. There is a first half and a second half and I'm going to zoom in on both of these so that I can show you but I want to show you them from a distance first. There is a slight difference and what happens is that we're going to do the first half and we're going to start our starting chain and then we're going to just do row number one which is unique. Then rows number two, three, four and five are repeating over and over and over until we start doing the decrease in order to get to the point. So it's a really quite an easy thing but it's so much easier to see it in diagram format than it is in the written instructions. So this is the other side here is the second half and it looks slightly different. So the only difference is is that the starting is different. So row number two on the top half looks different than row number two on the bottom half and that's because the pattern is staying in sync so that you can look across the model's back and it looks pretty seamless so it keeps it all nice and sync with each other and it's really quite fabulous. So you need to complete so many rows of that as well. So you need to do rows number two, three, four and five and then do that and, and then do the, PR, the point then to the end. Once we get to the end then there's a decrease and so the decrease happens to be the same on both. And so what we're going to do then is going to start stepping in like a stepping stairways as we do a decrease and then you're just going to continue to repeat that until you get closer and closer until you get to the final four rows. And the final four rows are slightly different in order for you to have that perfect ending on your shawl. So let's take a closer look on number one of the first half of the diagram in order to do this shawl. So this is the first half of the diagram and what happens is, is that we're going to start off and we're going to create the starting chain just like you see here and we're going to come back and we're going to do some single crochets. We're going to do double crochets together and we're going to start creating the foundation in order for rows number two, three, four and five in order to work up. You're going to notice that 
it is basically kind of very similar to each other but each of rows number two and four has a different starting point so that these shell work just like you see here falls in a different spot in order to have the amazing look. And if you can remember that it's a lot easier but I have to say these diagrams are really quite amazing in order for you to follow up. Here's the thing. Okay, so if anything you're gonna listen to me in today's video, you need to watch stitch marker at the end of row number one. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that because that's so important. You need to put a stitch marker at the end of row number one. And the reason for it is that at the end of row number one, when we go to do the second half, that's where we wanna start. So I don't want you accidentally starting on the wrong side because then that means that the peaking of doing your particular uh, wrap the, it won't be in balance with each other. So the peak will go in the wrong direction. So make sure you do mark that as you go. So what we're gonna do today is that we're going to go through the stitch work of doing the first half together of getting you started then doing rows number two, three, four, and five and letting you repeat. After we get that done, we're then going to move to the other half and what we're going to do is that this blue here of chaining just like you see here is actually the starting chain of the original up here. So you don't need to create that, it's already there. So right where the stitch marker and I put a label right here on this, on this diagram, that's where you're gonna start and you're going to then create the look that you see. And so then you have to repeat number two, three, four, and five and you have to repeat that nine times. So I have those instructions uh, as you see here. So you have to really kind of watch for that uh, when you're going to do it. Now originally when I did this pattern is that I had the top done and I was kind of lazy and I said okay I have to do a repeating of rows number two, three, four, and five. The problem is is that because you're staying in balance and it wants to be seamless on the other side, rows number two, three, four, and five are different on the opposite side in order for it to stay in balance. So it's actually uh, four, five, two, three. Trying to remember that in your head is kind of crazy. So what I did is I did a sec second diagram so that you can put this one away, not worry about it when you're doing the second half and pull up the second one right here and be able to follow along. So you're just gonna do the number of repeats in order to get to the end of this project and then you're gonna start doing the decreasing. Here's the thing. On the first half, you're going to do rows number one through five and then you're gonna do rows number two through five one more time. So it says that there's one on here, one through five. It should say two. I will correct that by the time you get access to that. And so it's gonna repeat nine times. So you're gonna do all four rows nine times. Then you're gonna do rows number two and three one more time in order for you to get in balance. Look at row number three here. Okay, so do you see here? So when you do the second half, you're gonna repeat, do rows number one through five and then again, I'll correct this again, two through five. And then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna finish and you will notice that row number five here is the same as row number three up here. It's the same thing. So when you go to do the decrease on here, you don't need to pull out your hair because you're in the exact space that you need to be. So on this diagram, I wrote on here, this is row number three of the first half, row number five of the second half, it's the same one and you will notice that you're gonna continue and start your decrease. So you don't have to think twice about the decreasing. Then eventually as you get near to the end, then you can just polish it off in the very final four rows just like you see. Now I know that was very long winded but this is a really kind of a complex uh, pattern if you're not thinking about it too carefully and my goal today is that you'll be successful in order to have one of these for yourself. So without further ado, let's grab a five and a half millimeter size uh, eye crochet hook today. Grab your Karen Simply Soft and let's get playing with this pattern. So let's move along to the first half today and we're going to get you started. We're gonna start with a starting chain and you need to do a total chain of 84 and then you're gonna come back across. Now you'll notice the sample here in the diagram is a smaller thing. Just think about it that it keeps on going and going and going. It's just a repeat pattern going across. We need to then do rows number one through five together and then we're gonna do rows number two, three, four, and five a total of nine more times. So you're gonna do two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, keep doing that nine times and then you're gonna come back and do rows number two and three one more time in order to be balanced before starting the increase. So today's tutorial what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you started on row number one and then I'm gonna take you through rows number two, three, four, and five and then you can reverse back the video in order to then complete and do rows number two, three, four, or five if you don't get it. And remember the information that you're seeing on screen today is available in the more information link of today's video description so that you can access anything that I'm showing you today. So let's grab our five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and Karen Simply Soft yarn and let's play today. 
So leaving an extra long tail so you can use to sew that in later. Let's create a slip knot and this is an intermediate level um, open, open work shell today, open work wrap. So you want to, to do a total of 84 for your starting. So just uh, rotate and just pull it through. So just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Go all the way to 84 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. So now that you got your chain done, we're now going to start row number one. It's the only time this is ever gonna appear for row number one. So this is the only time you're gonna see it like this. So in row number one, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna double crochet fifth chain from the hook and then we're gonna chain three and then we're gonna skip a stitch, single crochet and then create these arches of chaining of five. Skip so many stitches as you see here and then single crochet. So our whole idea is to get this pattern established right off the hop. So when we go to do then the second half, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna use that particular chain and do kind of the opposite on the other side in the exact same spaces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun in order to do this. So let's move along to row number one. You can follow this on the diagram if you wish as well. So let's begin row number one. So row number one we're gonna double crochet fifth chain of the hook. So let's look and count. So one, two, three, four and five and I want you to double crochet fifth chain from the hook. Just like that. So this is actually gonna count in the instructions if you're looking at it carefully is that it's gonna be two double crochet together. It doesn't look that way but that's what it counts as. So now you're going to chain a total of three and there's gonna be a consistency of chaining of three and five throughout today's pattern. So let's chain three. So one, two and three and you wanna skip one chain and go to the second chain over and single crochet in to that chain and then chain three once again. So one, two, three and then keep on going four and five. So total of chaining of five and I want you to skip a total of three chains. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and I want you to single crochet in. Now continuing along you're gonna chain three. So one, two and three. You're gonna skip one chain and you're gonna go to the second chain over and you're gonna put three double crochet together. So how we do that is that we wrap the hook and going into the next stitch. So we skip one stitch, second chain over and just come and pull through and then pull through two and hold. You then keep moving along your chain. So wrap the hook, pull through and you wanna do that a total of three times so that you end up with four loops on your hook and then pull through all four loops. And those three in the chain just became one. Do you see how they look like that? We're gonna be doing that throughout today's tutorial in different areas of today's pattern. So you're going to work and you're now gonna continue along. So chain three, so one, two and three. And the nice thing about this, when you see three together, you are always gonna know that you have to lead in with the chaining of three before it and three after. And if you can remember that, it makes it quicker for you to remember this pattern as well. So now that we got our chain three after we've done that, we skip one and go to the second one over and we're single crocheting into that one. And so now we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and I want you to skip three chains. So one, two and three, go to the fourth and single crochet in. And now chain three. So one, two and three and now we're gonna do that together thing all over again. So the pattern is repeating itself. So skip the first stitch, go to the second over and put three double crochets together. So you're just gonna go into the next one, pull through and hold it and then the next one, pull through and, and then pull it through and continue to gather them so that you have three together. So then pull through all four loops and then you're gonna chain three. So remember before you let into that you chain three, after you get over that chain three. It's kind of how I remembered it when I was doing it. So I, I skip one and I go to the second one over and I single crochet and then I chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. Skip three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and remember you're getting yourself established now. So it, it's you know it's always harder to work from a chain but once you can see this pattern materializing it gets a lot easier. So chain three. So one, two and three skip the next chain and put the next three together for another double crochet three together. And you keep doing that. So you just no matter how big that your project is so when you have your 84 you'll have a lot longer chain than me. It's, it doesn't take that much longer I have to tell you though. So chaining a three so one, two, three 
and then skip one chain, single crochet into the next. So for me, I'm getting close to the end of my chain. So you have some uh, more time to work on it. So you can put me on pause. But when you get to the very end, here's what you're going to do. The end of your row. Okay. So now to finish off, you're gonna chain your five and you're going to single crochet. You're skipping three and then continuing along. And then to finish off this row, no matter how long that you made it, if you did it 84, if you're doing a small sample like me, you're still gonna chain your three and then you're just gonna skip one and the final two uh, chains will be two together for double crochet. So this is row number one and uh, you never have to do this again. Not like this. And so this just gets you established on um, being able to get your chain five spaces. You have your threes together and now we're gonna move up to do rows number two, three, four, and five and that's the actual repeat pattern and that's where you're gonna wanna come back to when you need to repeat. So let's move along to row number two. So this is where you're going to start if you're gonna reverse the video back in order to follow me along if you need more help. So in order to do row number two, no matter any time you're starting row number two in the first half, it's always gonna be the same. It'll be chaining up one to begin and we're going to single crochet ourselves. You know what, I should show the diagram first. So in row number two, we're going to start off and we're going to single crochet in the first one here. See the two together and then we're going to then chain our fives and in the chain five spaces here, there's gonna be five double crochets. So anytime there's a chain five space, you'll notice that there's five double crochets that fit into it. Now this is a very easy row to figure out. Okay, so this row, row number two and four is very easy because there's always gonna be chaining a five that separates things. So it's the only uh, rows number three and five that you have to, uh, is worrying about doing chains of three and five. So rows number two and four are actually quite simple. So it's chaining a five, you put five double crochets, chaining a five, one single into the top and then chaining a five and so on. So you'll find that rows number two and four are quite easy. So let's move along to rows number two. So let's move along to row number two. We're gonna chain up one to begin and then single crochet right into the top of that first two together. So as I mentioned, we're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and you come all the way to the chain five space. So you're skipping over this one here and coming right into the middle right here and you're gonna put in five double crochets into that space. So don't have to go into any chains at all. Just go around the space and put in five double crochets. So this is a very lacy wrap. So it actually really kind of works out good. You could just looking for gaps and spaces and it just becomes very easy that way. So once you have your five, you're gonna chain five. One, two, three, four and five. Now see how you got the three together? The top one of that where they come together right here. Okay, so just look at really carefully where I'm pointing right here. Do you see the hole? That is the middle of that. So you're gonna single crochet into the middle of that and then you're gonna chain five and jump, uh, jump forward. So one, two, three, four, five and then you come in to the next chain five space. Okay, so skipping this, that's a chain three. Go right to the here, it's the chain five and you're going to double crochet. and you're double crocheting five times. So just remember it's about five. And if you can remember that, it just is easier to remember too. Okay, so once your five are in, chain five. Okay, and then jump across. So now there are three together. Remember it's gonna be right in the middle of where all three are put together and you're going to single crochet and then chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. And you're gonna continue to move across your entire row doing this exact same thing. So it's really not a hard pattern to be able to follow. So just look for the next chain five space. Okay, and you will be able to get it. And I want you to go all the way across your row and I'll see you at the end of this row in just a few moments. Okay, once you come to the end of the row, you're gonna run out of spaces. And so I have my five double crochets in. And so I want to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and the fifth one that joining, okay, so normally it would have been uh, where there's three together like you see here but on the end there's only two together and you were just going to single crochet in the top of where it's two together and that completes it. So the way that I remembered it for myself when I was doing this is that I started this row here with a single crochet right at the very top and then I'm going to finish it with a single crochet. So just remember that. So let's turn our work and move up to row number three. 
So in row number three we're going to chain up a total of six right here where right here where we did the single crochet and we're gonna chain up and then we're gonna come back into the first chain five and we're gonna put a single crochet and then we are going to chain up three and then do the three together. So we had already done that three together here on the chain but up here we're going to be working with the group of five and only selecting the middle three and then chaining a three and then just grabbing these chain spaces as you go and so every time you are working uh, before it, before they come together is chaining a three. You bring the three together and then it's chaining a three and then the one section here in the middle has the five where the next five double crochets will sit into it in the row above it. So just think about where things are sitting in the pattern when you're being able to follow it along. So let's move along to row number three. So let's move along to row number three. So we're gonna be playing right into this big chain space that you see right here and uh, we're gonna get started. So let's chain a total of six. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Why do you think that it's chaining of six? The answer is is that on the other side if you look very carefully and follow it all the way across on the paper you'll notice that it's a treble. So this chaining of six, four of those chains counts as a treble and the other two counts as a chain two space. And so it just really kind of makes a lot of sense that when you're going to work on that. So let's uh, move along and we are going to then just come across and we are going to then um, single crochet into this first chain space here and then we're going to then come to this area. So we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, and three and we're just gonna worry about these five that are in the middle and only select the three middle and put the three together for double crochet or double crochet together. So put those together and then chain three. So one, two, and three and then come to the next chain space, single crochet around it and then chain five. So this will be the, where the five double crochets are gonna sit next time. So one, two, three, four, and five and then come to the next chain space and single crochet and now look where the next five double crochets it's right here. So in order to get there you have to chain up three first. So one, two, and three and put the three middle double crochets together so that they come together as one. See how easy that pattern is? Right? So then chain three, one, two, and three. Come to the next space, single crochet around it and then chain five. So this will be the next double crochet area here and then single crochet around the next space and then we're looking for the next five that you see. So chain three to get there first and then put the middle three together. Okay, chain three, one, two, three and then continuing along just like this. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's just a repeat pattern that you have going across and then one, two, and three and then put the middle together. So you're eventually gonna get to the other side like I am. Obviously your panel is gonna be bigger than my sample here. And so to finish off this uh, particular one all we just need to do then is chain three. So one, two, and three and you're going to come in and you're going to single crochet around that space first then chain two and then treble around that space or treble into the top of the first single crochet that you had before. So that's how you finish that. So that was row number three. So let's move along and we're going to move on to row number four. Okay so for those that are following along you'll notice that I just scratched out a certain a digit here. There was an error right here originally when I just started this particular line but there's actually only two here to, in order to bring it in balance to the other side. So on your sample that you're gonna be able to download online this will already be corrected. So now we're gonna move up to row number four. We're gonna chain up three and then put uh, two more double crochets into the middle here. So this is like the equivalent of half of one of these five. Okay, so when we go to look at this is just you gotta just think about everything is just kind of shifting in order for these to be in balance with each other. So we're just gonna continue to move across. Now remember what I said is that rows two and five are pretty much the easiest. Everything is being separated by five chains as you're going all the way across and then we're gonna finish off and in row number uh, on the last section here in this chain up here in the fourth one you're gonna put three double crochets into there to bring it balanced to what is happening on the other side. So let's move up to row number four. So let's move up to row number four. It's gonna be chaining a three counts as a double crochet and then I want you to double crochet two more times into that same stitch right below. 
Okay, so it's in the, all into the same. So it appeared that there's three coming together into one stitch which is what exactly what you're looking for. So now what we're going to do is that we are going to chain a total of five. So one, two, three, four, and five and you jump all the way to where the three are sitting together right into that middle spot right there and you're going to single crochet in and then you're gonna chain five. So it's all about chaining a five right in this particular one. So chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now remember those spaces that we made with the chain fives in the row below? It's right here. You, okay, so you got a space here. That's chain three. This is chain five. You wanna put five double crochets in the chain five space. So one, two, three, four, and five. Just like that. So then how many chains are you gonna do? If you said the answer is five, you're right. So it's all about five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then coming into the next section where the three are coming together, that's gonna be a single crochet. Then how many chains? I bet you're saying five. One, two, three, four, five. That's the right answer. And then come up to the next chain five space and put in five double crochets. Do you remember? See how easy that is? If you can just get a memory hook. So rows number two and four are very similar to each other. They just start off at a different spot so that they can align properly within today's uh, wrap. So we're gonna do five double crochets and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And you're gonna go all the way across and you're gonna single crochet in the three together here. You're gonna go all the way across using the same technique. So let's uh, get to the other side. I'm almost done here. So chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Come to the next chain five space and put in five double crochets. Just like so. I'm on number four and five. And then chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And you're gonna come to the next where the three are together. Put in another single crochet. So remember how we're gonna finish this row and you can see it on the diagram as well. So you're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And you're gonna stretch all the way. So you see this big long chain? Remember that was chaining a six? So go up to the uh, fifth chain. So the fourth chain. So one, just count it up. So one, two, three, and four. And I want you to put in a total of, of three double crochets. Okay, so that's how you conclude that row. So now you have balance within yourself just like you see. Okay, so let's move up to row number five which is the final of the repeat pattern and then you're gonna do rows number two through five over and over and over again for the first half. So in row number five, this is it. This is the final time and then you're gonna go back to row number two again and go through two, three, four, five. So in row number five what we're gonna do is that we're going to then do like the three together all over again but it's in a different spot. So we're gonna chain up three and then we're going to double crochet into the next one. So the way that the uh, chaining of three up works up and this double crochet in the next one, it's like two together. So look on the other side, it's like two together. So just uh, make sure that you kind of remember that in the back of your brain. You don't have to think about it too hard. And then you're gonna chain up three and then you're gonna play within these gap spaces all over again. So you're creating these chain fives again for the next time that you're gonna have that in the row above and then you're gonna put your three together. So let's move along to row number five. This is the first half. So let's turn our work and go for row number five. So we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three, and we're gonna double crochet into the next stitch. Okay, and this is counting counting technically as two together. Okay, so let's uh, continue along. We're going to chain up three. So one, two, and three. And coming into this next chain space, okay, it's just right off there. You're gonna single crochet first and then you want to jump over five. Okay, so do you see how there's only two spaces here? between these sections. So you're kind of creating a three spaces for the next sec uh, section. So you want to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five and single crochet in the next chain space. Chain three. Okay, so the chain three was leading into on top of these and there's gonna be three together as normal. Okay, so you already know what you're kind of doing with that, right? It's just in a different space. So before it was closer to the edge when you did it. This time it's a little bit further over. And then the next time when you go to repeat it again, it'll be closer to the edge all over again. 
So you're gonna chain three as you leave that and you're gonna single crochet around the next chain space. Jump over five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Go to the next chain space, single crochet and now you're gonna lead into the three together again. So before you get there, chain three first and then put the middle three double crochets together. Just like that. Chain three, so one, two, and three. Coming into the next chain space, single crochet, jump over by chaining five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then coming into the next space, single crochet, chain up three, and then put the next three double crochets together, like the, the middle three. It'll always be the middle three uh, double crochets that you do that with. And then chain three, as you lead out of there, go and single crochet around the next space and now you're just gonna keep repeating that until you get to the other side and then on the other side you're gonna chain up five as you continue to follow the pattern across and then the very final section just like you see here you're gonna chain up three so one, two, and three and the final two double crochets that are in the edge you wanna put those two together. Just like that. And that's it. So that's row number five. So I've taught you now how to do rows number two through five. So all it's gonna do now is in the next section here, when you go through two through five again, this is gonna appear right in the section right here, right in front, and then these will appear again and again, and it will just keep on going. So you need to repeat rows number two through five nine more times. That's right, do nine more times. And then I need you to repeat rows number two and three just one more time. And you wanna finish off, finishing off on row number three to keep this in balance. And then you're gonna move along to doing the decreasing in order to get it to squash in. So what I'm gonna do in today's tutorial is that I'm gonna show you how to start the second half next and then I'm gonna show you the, how to do the decrease after that. So without further ado, let's move along to the second half where I show you what to do in order to start properly. Before you move along to do the second half and before you go any further, what I want you to do is just grab a spare piece of yarn and see where this tail is hanging off right here. I want you to put a stitch marker right in that spot so you remember where you need to start when you do the second half. Okay, so you're gonna put that there and now you're gonna continue then to finish off the first half. So just make sure you put that there so that you don't accidentally start on the wrong side of your project. So without further ado, let's move on to the second half now. So up until this point in the tutorial you've been following the first half of the diagram and now you are going to, you're gonna be doing the decrease first and then you'll start the second side. But in today's tutorial I'm going to show you the second side first before the decrease because the decrease is the same for both. So in the second part of it here we need to do the second half and the starting chain is already existing what you have. So you wanna turn your project up to upside down and you want to start your stitch marker right where it was. So I had you put a stitch marker in and so that's where you're gonna start where the stitch marker is labeled on the project. And that's where we're gonna start here and then we're gonna continue along. So we need to start this very first section over here. It's not a hard thing to do and then we're gonna go then through rows number two, three, four, and five and I'm telling you it's the same thing as what you just did. The only difference is that the order is slightly different so that the pattern stays in balance with each other. So let's move along to row number one starting second side. So let's start the second side and I have my stitch marker in and that's exactly where I wanna start. Just as a disclaimer here is that I don't have enough yarn to in order to, to do a sample and finish my project so I'm just going to leave a tail on. It's still attached to the sample but I am gonna frog it at the end of this so that I can finish off my shawl and throw it in the charity bin. So right where I have it right in the end here is that that's where I want to start my first stitch and I'm just gonna go in and just attach with a slip, a slip stitch. Okay, so slip stitch it first and then I want you to chain a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you remember from the first side that counts as a treble plus chain two. So now you're just going to skip over and what I want you to pay attention to is where everything is attached in the rows below. Okay, so it's upside down and so this, the stitch work that you have been working with is upside down. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go to where this stitch is right here, okay? And I want you to go into that same stitch and I want you to single crochet. So you're matching everything. So this is what keeps it looking very consistent on the back when you're wearing it. So now you're gonna chain up three. So one, two, and three. 
and now you're going to go in the specific chains itself. So don't go around the space because then it will decrease on itself and it won't look good but you wanna go into the three chains and you're gonna do three together double crochets using that chain work. So you've kind of already done that before right? So you should be able to be able to do that again and then pull all together and then chain three. So one, two and three and you come to the very next stitch just like you see here. Okay, see how it's attached on the other side? So that's where you're going to go. So you're watching everything. So everything's gonna match and stay open with each other to keep it in balance. So now you're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. You're gonna skip all over this and just jump over to this next space. So skip over these three togethers area and just go to the next space right over here. Seems like such a long jump but it works out and it's fabulous. So now you're gonna chain three, one, two, three and now you're gonna put the next three chains together. So just see how it's the five double crochets are right underneath it. So whenever you see that the one will be the three together in this section. Okay then chain three and then single crochet together or sorry single crochet in the next space right there. So right into the next actual stitch and then chain five. So one, two, three, four and five jump all over everything here and then single crochet into this next section. So you're just getting yourself established. So one, two and three. I can see the five double crochets are upside down so I know I'm in the right spot and so the next three chains will be to come together for double crochets. Okay and then chain three. So one, two and three and then coming in to the next stitch and single crochet and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and you're gonna do that all the way across your, your bottom end here and single crochet in the next space and eventually you'll get to the other side like I will. So chain up three, one, two and three and then just put the next three together for double crochets. Okay and then chain three. So one, two, three and then single into the next. And now to finish it off on the other side you're going to chain two and then you're going to put in a treble here right on the other side right here. Okay right in the top. So one, so wrap the hook twice and do a treble. Just like you see there. Okay so now you've just gone all the way across. you now got yourself established. So that was row number one of the second side. Now let's go back and let's review row number two of the second side. Let's turn our work first and then I'll show you what it looks like on the diagram. So here's what it looks like on the diagram. So now we're just gonna do rows number two, three, four and five. It's exactly what you already know that was done before. It's just in a different order so that it stays in balance. So we're gonna chain up three immediately. Put two into the st uh, first one then chain five and then you can see it's just balancing across like you had already done before. So I don't need to go through this as extensively as I did in the first half because it's exactly what you're already doing. It's just in a different order. So let's move along to row number two. So let's move on to row number two. We're gonna chain up three. So one, two and three and then double crochet two more times into the same stitch. So if you can read diagrams this is an easy pattern to be able to follow if you can do the, if you can do that. And then you're gonna chain up three so or chain up five sorry. So one, two, three, four and five and then just come and just right where the three are together you're just gonna go into the single crochet right where they come together and then go for another five. So this is one of those easy rounds or easy rows of just the fives if you remember from before. So just remember like you had before the next chain five space is gonna get five double crochets. So hopefully by the time you've hit this part of the tutorial and you're working on your sample you see how all of this makes sense and all of it comes together beautifully. And once you get your five in chain five so one, two, three, four, five and then come to the next where the th uh, three come together single crochet there first and then chain five one, two, three, four, five and then the next chain five space. you want to put in five double crochets. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five and then coming into the next three together. 
single crochet then chain five and you do this all the way across your chain or all the way across your row as you normally have been doing. The next one is five double crochets in there. So what do you think is the difference between the decrease rows and these rows that you see? The only difference is that you stop a little earlier each and every time in order to create the point. So chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. And then just single crochet in the top of the three together. And then five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then you just come immediately into the very first one way over here. Okay. And you are gonna immediately just um, put in uh, into the third stitch up you're gonna put in three double crochets up or three double crochets into there and that creates like a half of those group of five double crochets. So this was row number two and you can see everything is coming together quite nicely and let's move along to row number three. So let's turn our work first and let's pull up our chart once again. So here we go back on the chart that you see here in row number three. So we're gonna immediately chain up three and put a double crochet in the next one. So that's gonna be considered like two together. You see that on both sides and you already know what you're doing with here with the three together and so forth. So we're gonna create those chain five spaces in order to do the five double crochets again. So let's move up to row number three. So in row number three you're gonna chain up three, one, two, and three and double crochet into the next one. So that's counting as a two double crochets together. It's not technically but that's what they're saying that it is. And then you're gonna chain three. So one, two, and three. And then you're just gonna single crochet around the next space. And then you are going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then single crochet around the next space. And then chain three. So the next one here is the five double crochets. So it's gonna put three of those together. So in order to get there first we have to chain three first and put the middle three together. Just like you see. And then chain three. So one, two, three, single crochet in the next and then chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five, single crochet in the next. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, the next three are coming together. And you do that all the way across then for row number three. So I'll meet you at the end of this row and I'll just show you quickly how to finish off. So as you come to the end of the row in number three you're going to chain three first and then you're gonna put the, la the, the last two double crochets together with two double crochet together. And that will complete off row number three. So let's turn to work and let's pull back that chart and let's go for row number four. So in row number four what we have is that we're gonna start off with the single crochet first. So chain up one single crochet and then it's the groups of five all over again. Let's begin row number four. So row number four you already know how to do. You're gonna chain up one first and then single crochet and then you're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five and then you're just gonna skip over it to this chain five space and put in five double crochets. Okay, and we're continuing along. And then chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then just go into the top of the three double crochets that are together. And I want you to continue that same idea going all the way across. So chain five, then you put uh, five double crochets in the chain five space here and then so on. So continue along with row number four. To finish up row number four all you have to just do is once you get your group of uh, five double crochets and chain five all you're just gonna do then is single crochet in the top of the first one that you see. Okay so just remember that you started it off with a single crochet on this side you will finish it off. So let's turn our work go for row number five together and this will be the end of the repeat pattern then for second half and then you'll keep repeating. So let's move along to row number five. So in row number five all we're just gonna do is like before we're gonna chain up six and then you're just gonna come across and then you're just gonna be doing your three together as you normally have leading your chain five spaces in one all over again in order to do that. So in the second half we're gonna be doing a repeat rows now of two, three, four, and five eventually after we get this done and you wanna do that a total of nine times. So let's just uh, review on how to do row number five. 
So let's begin row number five. You're gonna chain up six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Do you remember what that counts as? A treble and chain two. So don't forget that. So in the first chain space here, you're going to single crochet and then you're gonna put the three middles here first. But remember to get there, you gotta chain three first and then put the middle three together. With the single, or three together, double crochet, three DC together. And then just chain three then come to the next space, single crochet and now you're gonna jump over by chaining five. So you're creating that middle space again. So one, two, three, four and five and then coming in, single crochet, chain three as it leads into the next group that you need to put together. So the three middles come together all over again. So I want you to repeat this all the way for number five and I'll see you at the end of this row. So let's finish off row number five together and I've just done my three together. Let's chain up three, one, two and three going into the space and then I'm chaining a total of two, one and two and then I'm gonna treble into the first single crochet. So that's how you finish off row number five. So in the second half what you have to do is that you have to go back and you can reverse this video and do rows number two through five all over again a total of nine times and then you're ready to do the decrease. So on the first half what we did is that we did nine times plus we had to do rows number two and three to in order to get balance. This side only you just do nine times and then you're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do for you at this point is that I'm gonna show you how to decrease on paper itself because the reality is that this pattern is so easy to follow if you're following it along in the diagram that I'm gonna show you how to do it and then I'll show you how to do the final decrease at the end where you can call, uh, uh, finish everything off nicely. So everything that you see that you're doing here is gonna happen under the decrease. The only difference is that you're gonna start eliminating stitches in order to get the point and the point is more like flat up and coming on an, on an angle like this. So let's pull up the decreasing to the point and let's begin to do that next. So let's begin moving on to the decreasing of the point. So at this point it doesn't matter if you're in the first or, or first half or second half. If you follow the set of instructions then you will be in the exact same spot and you do not fasten off your arn, uh, yarn in order to complete doing the decreasing. So you're just gonna pick up and do it. So what I've done here on the sheet is that I said this is row number three of the first half and this is row number five of the second half. Either way it's the same row and so then the repeat pattern for the row is row number one, two, three and four. But watch, it, look what happens. You're just gonna come along okay and so we're gonna start row number three and five. It's gonna come across and we're gonna start row number one here. But look where it finishes. See where the three together are on the top? That's where it ends. That's the one right before the end. Okay and so when you start on row number two you're gonna chain up three, single crochet into that chain five and then you're gonna continue the pattern all the way back to the start again. Then in row number three you come all the way back across. Look where you finish again. It's right on top of the three together. So you just have to keep an eye on that because that's the easiest way to be able to tell with this pattern is where things finish. Then you just chain up a total of five that time and then you just go into this chain space here and then you do the three together and you continually do that over and over. So in this particular section here is that the decreasing you're gonna do rows number one, two, three and four and do that a total of five more times in order to do that. And what this will do is that it will give you to row number 24 and then in row number 24 I'm gonna show you how to do the final decrease because it's slightly different than what you've been doing here but at the end of row number 24 this is where you should be. Okay you should be at here and then we're gonna start chaining uh, number 25 together. So everything that you already know in today's tutorial is already on here. The only difference is that you're ending earlier. So even though you can see the decrease happening you just have to think about this your pattern is much bigger than what you see on the sheet and so every time you're coming back in this direction you're kind of stopping right where the three come together. So I'm gonna leave that for you. It's kind of your homework. You know part of learning how to crochet is learning how to read these diagrams and I wanna leave that in your hands and I know that most of you will be successful if you give yourself the time to be able to learn and I think if you can learn stuff like this any kind kind of uh, patterns that I may throw at you in the future that have these kind of things. You may be actually quite surprised in yourself and how, how you skill build and I think this is a great opportunity. So begin reducing 
your uh, to the point and then uh, you can start the second side and then to do the second side to do that and uh, if you're at this particular point in the tutorial where you're ready to go then just uh, continue along. So it's a really quite an easy pattern to be able to follow along generally and I think that you'll have a lot of success. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna meet you up at the final as we do the final decrease together rows number 25 to 28 and then just make sure that you are watching where you're ending up early in order to create the point. So let's conclude our open work wrap and we're going to conclude now with rows number 25, 26, 27 and 28 and you're going to see that we're now going to create this final look. Now the reason why this is different from the other decrease is that it changes just slightly here in the front end but once we finish off row number 28 together you're going to be completely done. So if you've done your first half and this is part of your first half then you are going to want to go back and do the second half and then come back and do this when you get back to the second half. So the decreasing on on both sides is the same regardless of what side you're working on obviously. So let's move along to rows number 25, 26, 27 and 28. So let's start on row number 25. We're going to chain up three as normal. That counts as a double crochet and into the top of that same stitch you're going to put in two more double crochets. You already know what you're doing at this point. You're just going through the motions in order to get this done. You're going, then going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then coming down on the top where the three are coming together you're going to single crochet as you normally have been all throughout today's tutorial. You're going to now chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then coming in and this next big space as you have been to all along is that there will be five double crochets as normal. So one, two, three, four, and five and then you're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then you're just going to come into the top of this last one over here where the three are together. That's all there is for this. So you can see that you're running out of stitches a lot quicker now. It's going to get done and you're going to be able to wear this in no time. Let's turn our work and move up to row number 26 together. So 26 we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and coming into this chain five space as you see just go around the space and single crochet and then chain three. One, two and three and now the next group of five they're going to come together as you have been all throughout today's tutorial and you're going to put three double crochets together just like that and then chaining three. So one, two and three and then come to this next space chain our single crochet around that next space and then you're going to jump into the next space like you have been all through today's tutorial. So one, two, three, four and five. You're going to get tired of counting at five. I'm sure you're glad it's going to be almost done and now you're going to chain three. So one, two and three and like you had been done doing all along in today's tutorial the last two will be two together. So that was row number 26. So put those last two together and finish that off. Let's turn our work and move up to 27. We just got two more rows left and then you're free <laughs> to wear this afghan or wear this shawl and you're going to chain up one and you're going to single crochet in to the first stitch and then chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then come into that big space right here in the center and you're going to put in five more double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five and then you're going to polish that off with the chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then you're going to come into the last one here where the three are together and just single crochet. Okay you're on your final row right now and this is row number 28 and let's uh, get this started. So we're going to chain up three, single crochet in the first chain five space and then chain up three, one, two, three and then you're going to then uh, put your three together in the next group of five double crochets again. Just like that and then chain three, one, two and three, single crochet into the next chain space and then finally let's finish this off. We're going to chain three. So one, two and three and you are going to then put a treble in the final and that's it. That's how you do this peak into the end. 
So now you just have to weave in your ends. Now if this is uh, side number one for you, you have to go back and do the other side uh, and then uh, you'll have to come back to this part of the video in order to finish it off. And uh, it's gonna be quite fine and fabulous. So make sure you weave in your ends. So just cut your yarn. The best way to do it is just cut your yarn and just pull through. And I recommend this anyway because you're gonna be having this flail around and you know catch the wind and stuff. So you're going to wanna put it into a darning needle really quite easily. Don't be scared and just run it through your project three times. So if you go in one direction just in the stitch work you don't want to impede with it. You know, pull through once. Okay don't over uh, pull on it. Go the other direction twice and then come back in the other direction for three times and your project can never stretch in three directions at one time. So this is the best way to hide in these loose ends. Then you can trim it right down to the project just like so. So this is how you complete the open work wrap by Yarnspirations.com and you can see it went to a beautiful point just right here at the end. The model's uh, photo looks amazing as well. I'm excited about this as well and I think that you are going to look fabulous when wearing this as well. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Stay tuned next time as we have more free patterns and ideas coming ahead. Until next time, see ya.